from the Jeremy's Retro Bar. I'm Jeremy and this is my Retro Bar. And this week we're gonna be returning this reverse sleeper 486 class machine to its rightful home, a beige mini tower from the early 90s. But of course, first, we're gonna to need to make ourselves a drink. So for this week's drink, we're gonna be making ourselves a tequila sunrise. And we're gonna start off here with just a regular glass or a Collins glass, either one works. And I'm just gonna fill it with ice. Then we're gonna start with one and a half ounces of tequila. Then I'm gonna add three ounces of freshly squeezed orange juice. Then we're gonna add one half ounce grenadine, but we're gonna tilt the glass and pour it in very slowly. And that will allow the grenadine to sink to the bottom. And that's gonna create our sunrise effect. And we'll garnish with an orange slice and a maraschino cherry but I don't have maraschino cherries, I have these whiskey cherries, so I'm gonna throw that in. And there you have a tequila sunrise. Cheers. That's delicious. Fruity and awesome. All right, so let's get to reducing and making period correct this 486. So this week, the transition from reverse sleepers to authentic period style computers continues. Now, I was gonna take a departure because I've been really neglecting the Mac side of things, um, but I needed more parts. So I have parts on order, so hopefully I can return to the Mac really soon. But anyway, back to the PC and the Octet reverse sleepers. So uh, what I've been doing is slowly switching computers out. I switched out my 386 reverse sleeper with the Compaq 386-25E that I did the restoration on because it's a desktop form factor and I feel that that's more accurate for that era. I remember all the computers kind of being desktops uh, at the time. And uh, I've switched out my NUXT with the Tandy 1000EX, which I feature for my Septandy video. And uh, this week I'm going to be switching out this uh, 486, which is in this huge and nice modern Fractal Design Define R7 case with this giant honking front door. And I'm switching it out for pretty close to the actual 486 case that I had. Now, I haven't been able to track down the actual 486 case that I had. It was from a company called Pony Computers, which was a clone manufacturer in the Midwest somewhere uh, from what I've been able to figure out and I haven't seen any of their computers show up anywhere. So if anybody has a lead on a Pony computer, um, and I don't know what cases they were using or if they custom designed the front panel of their cases, but anyway, it was a beige mid tower or mini tower. I never remember which one's which. <laughs> it was a beige smaller than full tower case. And I have this case, which is very similar to the one that I had as a child. Um, as a child, I was in uh, high school, <laughs> but uh, very similar to the 486 case that I had at the time and uh, complete with the uh, megahertz readouts. Um, mine had round buttons here, but it had the same number of drive bays, pretty much the same height. And so I'm going to be taking all the guts out of this guy because I really like the way I have this machine configured and reducing it to uh, the smaller, more period correct case. So uh, let's get started. So I'm just gonna start by taking all the components out of the old case and then we'll go over what those components are and then we'll put them into the new case. For this 486, just so you know what is in it, I've gone with this ASUS PVI 486 SP3 motherboard. And the reason I went with this guy is because it's one of the later 486 motherboards. It has 16-bit ISA, a Visa card slot, plus three PCI card slots. I like this because it gives me a lot of options and a lot of possibilities. Uh, the processor that I've gone with is an AMD X86 P75. Uh, AMD X5 133 ADW. 
and that is a 133 megahertz, basically 486, but they're classing it as a Pentium 75. So for my sound cards, I've gone with two. I've gone with a Sound Blaster A32 and this hard MPU 1.1. Now this is a modern card. These are really cool because they are both the MPU interface card and the MPU 401 that you would have to get to plug into your Roland Sound Canvas. For this build, it's gonna be going into a SC55 Mark II, which would be pretty period accurate for this machine. For graphics, I've gone with two options. I've gone with uh, this Imagine 128 graphics card. Um, and the reason I've gone with this is solely because of uh, nostalgia. I had one of these in a Pentium machine that I had, and I really, really liked this graphics card. Um, it's an excellent 2D accelerator. Uh, it's pretty good in DOS. It's, it's compatible with uh, most, most DOS stuff as well. Now I've also gone a little uh, period not correct, or maybe late period correct, with this graphics card, uh, which is a um, Diamond uh, Voodoo One card. So 3DFX Voodoo card from Diamond, you know, will enable me to, to use, hopefully, some of those 3DFX games. Now, to be honest, I've never used a Voodoo card before. I have it in this machine. I haven't tried firing up the software that actually takes advantage of it. So I don't know how well it will run on a 486 or a 486 class machine. So to round it out, I've gone ahead with an Adaptech 1505-1515 SCSI card. And uh, of course, just a IDE to compact flash hard drive adapter. So um, right now, this is what I have it set up with, my DOS 6.2, Windows 3.11. So, okay, now we know all the components, so let's go ahead and get them into our sweet beige case. All right, so here is our beige mini tower. And to get into it, it is unfortunately not a nice screwless clip design. I actually have to unscrew six screws to get the case cover off. And we'll just slide this big metal thing off and it exposes our internals, which of course has a power supply. It already has a five and a quarter and a three and a half floppy as well as a CD-ROM. So I'm just gonna use the ones that it has. Everything else has been cleared out. So to get the motherboard in, this one actually is pretty neat. It has this little panel that comes out so you can put your motherboard in first. So we just take these two screws off here. And this little tray pops out for us. And that's gonna allow us to put the motherboard on. I've got one standoff and then a bunch of these little slide items here. So we're just gonna need to see which ones we need to use. And I've got this awesome StarTech screw kit for vintage PCs and it actually has the little AT era plastic standoffs, which is awesome. So we can get our guy there. Same here, another standoff. All right, so now we got all those guys connected. We're gonna go ahead and slide this down and screw in the two screws that we have. So first thing I'm gonna do is just put in our serial parallel ribbon cable. And then we'll connect all these motherboard headers. All 
All right, let's go ahead and start putting these cards in. All right, I have all the cards installed. I'm not gonna put the case cover on just in case. Um, there's some problems. So we're gonna go ahead and plug it in and see how everything works. Okay, so here we are in the spot where it's gonna live. So right now I'm just gonna use what I had before and uh, make sure that everything works. Now, spoiler alert, um, <laughs> it didn't. Uh, this is actually the next day I had a lot of issues when I tried to turn it on, it wouldn't boot. I couldn't figure out why. It turns out that the onboard controller was giving me issues. Anyway, it was messy. I had to go into BIOS and turn off the onboard controllers, and now I just have a controller card put in the machine, which now runs the floppies and the IDE channel, So, which is great um, that I had one, but it just took a lot of fiddling and messing around to figure out what was going on and uh, still not quite sure why just that part isn't working. So what I wanna finish doing here is we're just gonna turn it on here and make sure that it boots up and we should get a prompt in a second. And it sees everything and we're booted up to our prompt. So I'm gonna call that good. I'm gonna go ahead and put the case cover on and one final touch and then uh, we can test this guy out and see what it can do. And now to do the thing that I have never done before and that is put a case badge on a computer case. And I got these pretty sweet Jeremy's Retro Bar case badges set in black so they're a little bit hard to see because of the reflection but we can now officially badge that as the Jeremy's Retro Bar 486. All right so now we're here back up and uh, let's just take a look at a couple of things. I'm actually gonna play Doom 2. That plays good and it sounds great. That's a mix of the Roland Sound Canvas for the MIDI and of course the Sound Blaster for the, the sound effects. So let's see what else we have. I'm actually going to um, pop here into Windows. So one of the things that I wanna look at here is King's Quest Six. So this is interesting because some of the sound effects are played on the Sound Blaster and some are being played on the Roland. So it's a unique mix of the two. Alexander picks up his royal insignia ring from the beach. And obviously all speech is being handled by the Sound Blaster. 
Alexander pushes the plank to one side. A box has been partially buried under sand. Alexander takes the coin and leaves the ruined box where it is. Good day, peddler. Good day, sir. If you would like to get one of my fine new lamps, I'll need an old lamp in trade. So you can see everything there is sounding great. So while I'm in Windows, I actually want to take a listen to the CD drive because that's one of the reasons why I did this. It gives me actual physical drives again, which I did not have with the reverse sleepers. And this is going to play, uh, basically these are just uh, songs from my music library uh, provider. So I burned them the CDs so we shouldn't get tagged for anything copyright. Also here in Media Player, I can of course play the one and only Canyon.mid. Now this is actually using my MIDI sequencer and the MIDI sequencer that I have configured is the Roland Sound Canvas. Open up Solitaire. See that goes very fast. So our Windows Accelerator 2D graphics card is working great. Realize Solitaire isn't the strongest tester of that. So finally, what I want to do is test this. And this is actually my original copy of Tomb Raider Gold. I don't know why this is a game that I kept the whole time, but I did. I think partially because I couldn't sell it for a price that I wanted, and now I'm glad I didn't. Um, but if we look at the system requirements, it says, system requirements, a Pentium 60 is required, a Pentium 90 is recommended. Eight megabytes of RAM required, 16 megabytes of RAM recommended, DOS 6 and or Windows 95, Super VGA, 2.0 or higher, compatible video, video card, Creative Lab, Sound Blaster, Sound Card, or 100% compatible, 2x CD-ROM drive. So I have a 2x CD-ROM drive, I have a Sound Blaster compatible card, and I have enough hard drive space and RAM, but I do not have, technically, a Pentium 60. We're running on a 486, but a very high megahertz 486. So I'm gonna try running this in software mode first, and then we're gonna try out the 3D effects and see what that does. So I have both executables in the directory here. So Tomb is gonna be the regular software version and uh, we'll see how this goes. See, not very high detail, uh, very sluggish. <laughs> Look at that frame rate, it's not great. So I can play this high detail version and then let's see if I hit F1, that'll bump me. Yep. 
yeah, so F1 bumps me to low details, so this plays a little better, but as you can see, it's super, super, super pixelated. Okay, so there we can see what it looks like in software mode. Obviously low resolution, it runs pretty playable, but super, super pixelated. And if I run it in high resolution, it's almost unplayable. It's so choppy. It looks good, it looks really good, but it's very, 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 very choppy. Okay. So now I'm going to play the 3D FX version, and I just called it Tomb 3D FX. And we get a cool 3D FX logo there. Much smoother 3D performance. No lag on the menu. Say new game again. And look at that. That is super smooth. So the, the 3D effects voodoo actually does help and does allow our our lowly high megahertz 486 to be able to play this game, which claims to be Pentium only. So, that's pretty cool. Still doesn't improve my game playing, but nothing does. Yeah, that's really cool. I I now <laughs> kind of get the 3D accelerator thing. It's um, an era in which I wasn't really paying a lot of attention. And uh, I can see that it's very impressive. Anyway, I think that about does it for this, what was supposed to be a pretty simple episode where I just took the components out of one case and put it into a new case and ended up having to frustrate or be frustrated and troubleshoot uh, a faulty controller. I'm glad that it's up and working again. I'm glad that all of the bonus features that I have in this are working again. And uh, I think it's really great. This is such a cool machine. It's very, very similar to the one that I had whenever I had my first own computer, which was a 486 33 megahertz. And this of course is a, a 486 133 megahertz, so much faster than what I originally was dealing with, but a very cool machine, obviously very nostalgic, just hits all those boxes of really great DOS gaming and early Windows gaming, which I think it's neglected. I think it's really cool that both the Sound Blaster and the Roland Sound Canvas work so well together that in so many games they play from both of those devices. I like that I have a three and a half and a five and a quarter inch floppy drives again, as well as a CD-ROM drive. And that just makes playing games of this era so much easier. Upgrades for the future, of course, are going to be uh, an, a keyboard, obviously a CRT of some sort. I don't remember which CRT I had at the time, um, but you know, something that, that matches. And of course, speakers that also match. Anyway, those are some upgrades that I plan on doing in the future to this machine, but the machine itself is set up and ready to go. It's got the sweet Jeremy's Retro Bar case badge, and uh, I just really like it. I really feel like this is a real 486 finally. So anyway, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.